Um, we just wanted to have a, a few minutes before the main um, session today because we've got some really um, exciting news that we've um, we have talked about already at this conference, but we just wanted to take a moment to formally announce um, the transition that the Global Health Network has had to become a WHO collaborating centre. And so we wanted to explain that um, to the uh, Global Health Network community that everybody is. Um, and also that we've got one very particular project within that that we um, we wanted to explain and invite um, you all to get involved with. And so I'm going to hand over to um, to John Reader to um, to explain the WHO's um, decision on making us a collaborating centre. And then Sam and I will take you through um, the plans we have for the research framework. So thank you very much. Thanks, Trudy, and good morning, everybody. And first, congratulations to the network on uh, being made a WHO collaborating centre. It's not an easy process. There's an awful lot of paperwork you might expect from a bureaucracy like this. And in fact, now WHO is trying to really hone down on just the centres that it collaborates with uh, in, in a really substantive fashion. So it's becoming harder and harder to, to become a collaborating centre. But the background of this is... Um, I think many of you would have been here yesterday and realized that, that one of my jobs is director of TDR. Uh, and we've been working with the Global Health Network for quite some time, uh, particularly around creating a community of practice for our, our uh, clinical research and development fellows. And I suspect there are a couple of those fellows actually in the audience. I've bumped into a few of them around. So we have quite a long history from the start of keeping an eye on this. But then there was quite a change. About three years ago, the director general decided to establish a science division for the first time at WHO. And the idea here, of course, all was science and evidence has backed up WHO decisions, but was to really bring it front and center and try and make it a coordinated, uh, coordinated attack across the organization. And as part of that division, they decided to set up a department of research for health to try and coordinate and harmonize the, the WHO research approach. And the DJ asked me to take that on as a second job and kind of set up this, this center. And as I was thinking about how we did this, obviously on one level, we're looking across the research spectrum within the organization, but coming from a background of being a researcher uh, uh, and working, I was director of uh, the Papua New Guinea Institute of Medical Research for many years, working on the other side of this, I was very keen that we started to involve the wider scientific community. And so WHO didn't sit on this hill of science kind of looking down telling people what to do but actually got down and became part of the community so it was a great opportunity to engage a little further and we did this with two things the, the first was um, one of my responsibilities is looking after health ethics uh, for, for WHO and we have many brilliant collaborating centers and centers that, that collaborate with us and we really wanted to support knowledge exchange between them and this is already something we engage with but then, really, the exciting concept that you're going to hear about today was really trying to, as the, the title of the conference says, to make research possible in every healthcare setting. And one of the obstacles to this is that investigators are trying to set up studies and they look up the ICH, GCP kind of regulations, which are made for big scale pharma randomly controlled trials. And they just think, this is too much. How can I ever cope with all of the bits and pieces around this to make a protocol? But the truth is, you don't need to be. What you need to do is look at your context and get the appropriate guidance to get a protocol that's safe, it's effective, it's ethical, and works for the investigators. So we wanted to help researchers navigate all these many pieces of guidance and to be able to put together protocols that really serve their own needs, but are still excellent science and, and to excellent standards of, of doing this. And this is where we started to really engage in, in this tool. An analogy that I had early on is at the moment, it's like you go into a library and you say, I'd like a book on clinical trials. And the librarian just says, it's a library. We have plenty of books. If you look up and down every row, eventually you'll find it. And what we want to do is for that librarian to take the person by the hand and say, what you need is in this section look here and you'll find everything you need. And I think you'll hear that we've made considerable progress to, to that. So I'll hand over to Trudy and Sam, but again, my congratulations. And we really look forward to working with the Global Health Network in this more formal capacity with WHO. Thanks, Trudy.
Thanks, John. So it's official now. The Global Health Network, all of us as a the Global Health Network community are a WHO collaborating centre. So that's really exciting. So I'm delighted we've had the opportunity to market. So the most important thing is to really get down to business and what that means. And what I'm really um, excited about is if we think back to the talks we heard yesterday, and you're going to hear again today, lots of um, different groups um, are setting out to do research. And a lot of this meeting is about how um, people find particular areas of conducting research difficult and they don't know where to get help. And we'll talk about this more later this morning. So what we've been trying to do with um, the science division, as you heard, is to try and find um, a solution to that. And so what we want to do is to, as uh, John so eloquently put, to help search through the library. So if you're a researcher working um, without a big program around you and you want to, to set up a high quality study, how do you do that um, in a way where you can navigate all of the um, myriad of information that's out there and cut down to what you need for your study to make it safe, ethical and accurate. And ICHGCP is completely um, valid for a randomized uh, controlled trial for a, for a regulatory product. And it's all based on the Declaration of Helsinki, which says you need a good study, it needs to be safe, accurate and ethical. But it's just almost impossible unless you've, you're vastly experienced to work through the whole of these guidelines to say, what do I need to do for my study in this setting, in this context, to ask the right question and make sure it's accurate, safe and ethical. And so we've come up with this plan that we've been working on for a while. And we, we, the, the, what we, all we want to do this morning is invite any of you, all of you, to help us refine this. The expertise in, in this um, conference is vast, and also the range of experience and the range of studies you work on is, um, is, is an amazing opportunity. And so we're trying to build a framework which will work as a, um, an online app, which Sam's gonna explain in a moment. And it will simply be like having an expert standing at your shoulder to say, okay, are you doing research? It's, an, it's not an audit, you're doing research. You're gonna either be taking a sample, giving an intervention, doing maybe a questionnaire or uh, an interview, or you might be using identifiable data. And the really exciting thing is that research is moving really fast. It's evolving very quickly. I've talked to lots of people about this this week and we've heard from presentations and we'll hear later today. And we're moving away from um, having sort of phase one, two, three, and four and um, the to old norms of clinical trials. And there's so much um, opportunity, even with looking at real world data or um, look, taking data from observational studies and, and looking at it a different way. So we also need agile frameworks to help still make sure that any type of health research is safe, ethical and accurate. So this framework we want to develop should work for any type of study. And so that could be an observational study, it could be a clinical trial, it could be a social science study. You know, we had so much about community engagement yesterday, it's so vital to do those perception and um, human um, behavior studies too. And so this um, uh, piece of resource that is gonna be developed as an app will ask this series of questions and, and, and it will at the end come out with a solution for your own study that says, to make you sure it's safe, accurate and ethical. These are the things that, and steps that you need to do. And so um, I'm gonna to pass to Sam, who's gonna just take you through very briefly how we'll do this. Um, and then he's going to challenge all of you to see if you want to get involved. So thank you very much and over to you, Sam. Hi everybody. Um, so yes, as Trudy has been saying, we've been working on um, this framework and our first challenge was trying to um, uh, uh, work out how exactly to embark on this undertaking. So what we've done, obviously being part of the, the, the Global Health Network is we've, we've um, gathered together some of our community to create a core team who is helping uh, of experts of different uh, research studies to help us um, build the core content of the app. And this core team is then, um, uh, creating some content that was then reviewed by a wider working group that um, is also from the Global Health Network community and they review the uh, what we've done so we've created uh, the core team creates questions um, and answers based on a particular case study uh, depend of, of all different types of studies um, <clears throat> and the review team reviews that sends us back the feedback 
um, and con contextualizes it for us so we can create start creating the right questions the answers that they would ex expect people um, to choose which then would take them through a pathway and this gradually um, <clears throat> uh, builds up a, a picture of the study that they want to do and the guidance um, that is relevant to their study so the, there's the core team and the review team and as um, after the review team what we do is build it into this app and then we, we ask we're asking the wider going wider again um, the wider community to have a look at the app play with the app um, and to give us more feedback if this the right if, are we asking the right questions do we need um, um, have we got the right answers for for how you work in the field so this is a bit of a busy slide, but this is just, um, but it is, it is actually simplified. Um, but this is just an indication of how we've been working um, to build the questions, to build, start building the route um, through to, to try and capture what you want to do in your study and to point you to the to relevant guidance that's relevant to the study that you want to do. Um, so the, the pathway will take you um, through various questions and then it will um, take you to dead ends, that, um, but then we'll output the um, the right uh, uh, summary, an overview of what you want to do, um, and point you to the um, the guidelines. And it will keep going, taking you through. And um, the app itself is a, a very uh, um, simple app. It's all on online in a browser setting, and the app is question by question. So each screen is a question. So uh, what we see here on the slide before is what's behind the app. So you don't see every route that's available to you in the app itself. But this is just a way for us to review what we're doing, make sure we've captured it and everything. But the app itself will be very simple. Each you're faced with the questions you go through and behind it is taking you through all these different pathways. And at the end, if you can see here, at the, the bottom right screenshot, it will output the the overview of what you've selected in your in your um, route through the app and produce um, uh, signposts to the guidelines that are relevant to the uh, an the answers you've given. Um, so we've we've made good progress, but there's still lots to do. So this is where we come uh, to everybody. Um, we need you to help us shape this tool to keep help giving us feedback, make sure we're capturing everything, we're not missing anything, um, and to make this as user um, accessible as possible. So if you're interested in helping, please find me or any of us um, today and or email me and uh, we'd be very glad for your help. Thank you. <laughs>